Season 2, Episode 31 of The Brain Manifesto, brought to you by The Ecclesian House. This is Pastor Bill, and over the next 10 minutes or so, we are going to kick off seven weeks of armor by finally diving into the first piece of armor of God in Paul's list. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 14, part A. Stand, therefore, with truth like a belt around your waist. This, the whole book of Ephesians, was written while Paul was in prison in Rome, around 62 AD. It's no wonder that while chained to the Roman soldier who stood guard over him, that he would draw on elements of what was in front of him. In this, we can see why Paul chose the belt, breastplate, sandals, shield, helmet, sword, and perseverance of prayer. Although that last one was probably more a remark on his own pastime when not writing. The CSB translation for this first half of Ephesians chapter 6, verse 14, while accurate, leaves something to be desired from an in-depth study standpoint. In the KJV, it reads, Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth. That phrase, girt about, in the KJV, or like a belt, in the CSB, is the word peridzonumi. It's to gird all around, that is, to fasten on one's belt. Gird about, to gird yourself. As you can see, the word can be used to indicate the fastening of the belt. However, girding your loins is an actual cultural reference. When studying scripture, these cultural references are important in understanding what the author is trying to communicate. In this case, pretty much every citizen in the region this text was written, at the time it was written, and going back for a very long time, wore tunics. In a tunic, to perform heavy physical labor or to stand in opposition to an enemy or in battle, you'd have to gird up your loins. You'd need to reach down and gather the fabric of your tunic up above your knees and pull all that fabric around yourself forward in your hands so that it pulls tight against the back of your legs and butt. Next, you take all that fabric and push it in between your legs, then grabbing it in the rear. Split that fabric evenly in both hands behind you and pull it forward over your hips and tie it in a knot in the front or tuck it into your belt. At this point, you kind of look like you're wearing a giant cloth diaper that's attached to your shirt. However, the Roman soldier's uniform wouldn't have included a tunic. He would have worn leather lappets, a napron of strips of leather that extended down usually to the knees. It would seem here that Paul has once again chosen his words very carefully in choosing a word that not only references the soldier in front of him, but equates it to something that the intended reader could equate to their own lives understanding. Just as abandoning the cultural reference of girding your loins leaves something to be desired, ignoring the significance of the belt in the Roman soldier's armor would also be a mistake in studying this piece of the armor of God Paul is writing about. In a Roman soldier's armor, the, dre- the, the breastplate it, um, it hangs loosely over the body and is secured by the belt. Without the belt, the breastplate wouldn't protect the soldier's body and would become an encumbrance instead of a benefit. This would throw everything off. Everything the soldier was trying to do would be undermined and it would make him completely inept. And now armed with all that information, we, we have to ask, what is 
the truth that Paul is talking about here? Well, there are six different words used for truth in the Bible. They are ontos, which is really, certainly, clean, indeed, of a truth, verily. This word is used when you're saying that it's obvious that something is the truth. Then there's nahi. It's uh, a strong affirmation. Yes, even so, surely. Uh, this is used when giving a personal testimony of some action or factual detail being the truth. Uh, el a thos. Uh, it's truly, indeed, surely, uh, of a surety. This word is used when you're saying that you believe something is true and are telling someone else that they should believe that it's true as well. Alethes, uh, true, not concealing. This is used when you're talking about a truth that is out in the open and verifiable by one or more sources as the truth. Alethe, you owe is to be true, to speak or tell the truth. And this word is used when referencing um, teaching the truth to an apprentice or a disciple. Lastly, the word for truth in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 14, is the word aletheia. It is verity. This is used when talking about truth or truths that you sincerely believe. It's the core tenets you believe in that drive your actions and influence the way you see the world. It's this sincerity that Paul identifies as the belt or girding of the armor of God. It is the surety that holds the breastplate tight to the body. It is the girding that is the first step to standing against the enemy. Perhaps we can narrow that down a little bit more. First uh, John chapter 5, verses 5 through 6 says, Who is the one who conquers the world, but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? Jesus Christ, he is the one who came by water and blood. Not by water only, but by water and by blood. And the Spirit is the one who testifies, because the Spirit is the truth. The Spirit is the truth. The word used there is the same word used in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 14. Verity. Sincere belief that drives your actions and influences the way you see the world. This is the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Without the guidance and direction of the Holy Spirit, not only will your breastplate hang loose and you won't be prepared to stand against the enemy, but you'll end up going the way of Adam and Eve, who, when confronted by the enemy, didn't champion the truth and stand up for the word of God, leading us down the path we currently contend with. We know we're on the right path with this first piece of armor when the fruits of the Spirit manifest in us. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. The pursuit of the fruits of the Spirit, the pursuit of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control is the pursuit of the truth Paul talks about in Ephesians 6.14. The piece of the armor of truth isn't easy. It won't be quick. It has to be a highly personal experience to be effective. Faking it won't make it. It's long and difficult, but you can do it. I believe in you. You can do this. And this is Pastor Bill saying, until next time.